I recently got a new driver as a gift for my birthday, and after hitting it, I felt pretty good about the results. Then when I watched the Players' Championship golf tournament over the weekend and started to compare the best of the best's play to what I experienced on the driving range, I felt kind of empowered, almost like I could compete with the best. Let me show you what I mean. This is Brandon Todd on the famous Island Green Hole. Todd on the tee. Listen to it. He just dropped the club and laughed. A shank. Uh. That indeed is a shank. The next shot is from Bryson DeChambeau, the winning player in the tournament last week. The driver is trying to peel a little fade down there into the fairway. Well, it was, but I mean to tell you. The top. Keep your head down, Bryson. His playing partner, Lee Westwood, then teed off, and this is what he did on the very next shot. Now here's Westwood, also with less than driver. Oh, well, what is that? Well, I don't know, but there's a penalty area over there as well. What have we? My goodness, and that splashes. That certainly looks like one of my slices. After watching some of the shots back to back to back, it had me wondering, am I good enough too? Can I play with the pros? The fact is, I'm not even close to playing with the big boys. They just have too many advantages over me. Now, I can birdie or par a hole here, there, and sometimes in succession. Most golfers can, but the vast majority of the time, I am not. Why not? Well, I swing too fast. I take on too much risk. I'm not patient enough. I don't practice enough. I don't have the physical ability to hit a drive 300 yards, which begs the question, what about you as a trader? Can you or we trade like the big boys, the pros? In this video, I will give you five tips that will help you to stay in the game versus the best of the best. Hello everyone, Greg Michalowski here. In this video, I will give you five tips you can use to keep up with the pros, with the big boys. Tip number one, focus and understand your risk. The best and brightest traders focus on risks, not on reward. That is, not to say that reward is not important. If you are going to win in trading, you need to be right. However, I like to say, if you are not risked out, my more subtle and positive way of saying stopped out, you are rewarded. The best traders define risk with a reason or reasons. What does that mean? Simplistically, if ABC, which can be uh, fundamentally driven or technically driven, is true, I still believe in the trade. If ABC is false, the market is not doing what I expect. I get out. Fundamental traders in tech stocks recently started to take the move up in interest rates more seriously. There was an ABC change in the fundamental story for that sector. So traders got out of those stocks and rotated into the recovery or cyclical stocks. The bias changed. For me, my preferred way of defining risk is technically. That is via the charts and tools applied to those charts. The price action with tools attached define risk. How? They determine a bullish or bearish bias and changes in the bias. As a result, the best traders will lean near the technical levels because that is where risk is the smallest. This is the sterling versus US dollar hourly chart. The blue line represents the 100 hour moving average. The green line represents the 200 hour moving average. Traders who focus on risk will use those moving averages as risk slash bias levels and use them to enter trades. So when the price fell below the 100 hour moving average here, 
The best traders sold. The bias changed to more bearish. How do I know? Look at the momentum through the level. Traders who sold on the bias shift here likely used the level as a risk level when they did the trade. It never came into play as the price trended lower and shortly thereafter, they may have been buying right here against the 200 hour moving average for a gain of about 80 to 85 pips. Another low risk trade was right here. In this case, the traders leaned against the 38.2% retracement at 1.40042 and the 200 hour moving average at 1.4014. There were two technical reasons to trade. Risk was limited. It would have taken a move above both levels with more momentum. That did not happen. The price rotated back down. The best traders are focused on risk and as a result trade near risk defining technical levels. Tip number one. Focus on risk, not reward, if you want to trade like the pros. Tip number two, be patient. Too many retail traders force trades. It most likely is a function of our inherent desire to when we work to do something. So retail traders boot up their computer or grab their phone and work. They do a trade. Trading successfully is more than that. The better traders are not so anxious. They do not rush entries because they feel like they have to do something. They are patient for the best entries. The dollar yen is having some upside indigestion here. The high was broken but failed. Other highs are coming in lower than the highest high. However, there is a strong trend line with four points on that line. A patient trader looking to sell We'll see the battle going on between the trend line and the highs and patiently wait for the break right here. By doing this, there is a change in the bias from a little more bullish but tiring to more bearish. The added advantage is the ceiling here can be a risk level after the break and the trade is done. Note how the price broke and there was a retest of the broken trend line here. Patient traders pounced on the second opportunity to do the trade and the price moved lower. That price action is what patient traders love to see. So tip number two, the best traders are patient for their trades and then react with confidence. Tip number three, non-trending transitions to trending. Adam recently talked to this idea in his video, The Crouching Tiger Trade. He played off the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, a Chinese idiom that warns against the quiet ones. Anyone who has ever seen a National Geographic documentary on tigers have a vivid visual of this idea. Most amateurs will look at a non-trending market and not pay attention to it. That is the worst thing that you can do. Think about it. A market that is non-trending is doing so because buyers and sellers are unsure of the next directional move. The dynamics is not likely to stay that way forever. If so, no one would make money and trading would become extinct. Who trends the markets? Typically the biggest and best traders. They are the crouching tigers. The small retail traders can be crouching tigers too. The difference is we follow the tiger soon after the killing starts or is over. We want to be the vultures since retail traders can't move the market individually, but we can still feast on the trend moves. The Dollar Canada recently presented this opportunity for traders. The Dollar Canada over this period had traded nine or 10 days, mostly between 128.86 on the downside and 129.99 above. Yes, the price had broken above the top extreme twice here and here and had a brief break below the low for just two bars right here, but for about 200 of around 225 hourly bars, the price traded in a narrow 113 pip trading range. On the ninth day, the Crouching Tiger was lurking near the converged 100 and 200 hour moving averages. The last two highs here tried to move above the moving averages only to quickly fail. Right here, the Tiger was starting to move in. Sellers leaned against the moving averages. The price moved lower. 
The next day, the price fell outside the consolidation area, had one last attempt on the move here, but that was it. The selling intensified and the price trended lower over the next few days. The trend move from the moving averages was about 215 pips in two and a half days. The trend move from the break outside the box was about 100 pips in less than two days. Tip number three, non-trending transitions to trending markets. Pros look for the non-trending markets and move in for the kill. You can too. Tip number four for trading like a pro, manage your trades. Going back to the golf metaphor, a pro golfer will play a hole in steps. It progresses from a tee shot to the fairway, from the fairway to the green, and from the green into the hole. Each shot is an independent event and just as important as a previous shot. The pros in trading take the same mindset into their trades. To do that, they start with the entry. I discussed how pro traders look for low risk defining areas with reasons where they look to enter the trade. Let's say it's a break above the 100 hour moving average. After the entry, if the position is not risked out, the pro trader looks for the next target. That target is down the fairway in the direction of the trade and should have a reason for its importance. Maybe it's targeting the 200 hour moving average. If that 200 hour moving average is reached without being risked out, the next entry, which is really the continuation of your original position, is taken against the new targeted level. And a new stop level is established higher than the original stop. It's like another shot, but continuation. The new shot or new trade will look to take the trader to the next target. Maybe that's the 50% retracement or a topside channel trend line. That trend line might be where the trader holes out or exits the trade if the trade is not already risked out along the way. After all, taking profit and holing out is part of the game of trading as well. The important thing to visualize and to realize is a trade does not begin and end when it is first entered. Lots of retail traders think in terms of where they entered the trade and not about managing a trade from target to target to target. That is wrong. Like a golfer who moves from shot to shot to shot until the putt is holed out, traders manage the trades the same way. They go from entry with a reason to a target with a reason to a new entry with a reason to a new target with a reason and so on. Unlike golf, however, the trade may end before the hole if the managed stops are triggered. That is the way the pros manage their trades. That is the way you should too. Tip number four, manage your trades and you'll be more like a pro. Tip number five to trade like a pro, forget diamond hands. My tip number five is more timely one that has spawned out of the recent phenomena of Wall Street bets. Wall Street bets was where the GameStop story evolved and grew into quite a successful trade with the price moving from low teens to $483 in a matter of days. That is, it was a success until it wasn't because liquidity conditions changed and the price started to plummet. A popular rallying cry for many on Wall Street bets was the need to have diamond hands. In other words, don't have weak hands, but hands as hard as diamonds. I am all for letting profits ride, and it is true that in many stocks, profits will ride over time. However, diamond hands for traders that bought GameStop at 400 or even 300 translate into a big, fat, unrealized loss at the current price around $210. Lots of retail traders in Forex have diamond hands attitudes as well. They will cover profits quickly and let diamond hands on losses run and run and run. Taking losses is just as important as letting profits run. So tip number five, forget diamond hands. That is not the road to success for professional traders and it should not be for you. So those are my five simple tips to trade and keep up with the pros. Of course, you will likely shank a trade, maybe top another and slice a third. 
But even the pros do that. Thanks for watching. For 4X Live, I'm Greg Michalowski.